Coming up on the top 5 Kickstarter games of September, we take a look at a love letter to the 90s platformer, a gorgeous looking roguelike and what may be the next big MMO. But just before we do, let's recap the Kickstarter projects from August. 911 Operator, the game that has you play as an emergency dispatcher, raised almost 38,000 US dollars to more than quadruple its funding goal. Column and its non-chronological steampunk story just topped its mark of 40,000 euros. The charming RPG throwback Glitched raised over 68,000 US dollars to absolutely dwarf its target figure of 7,500. Our number one game from August, the competitive arena shooter Diabotical garnered over 168,000 pounds to also secure funding. Lastly, at the time of recording, Volpi needs to secure an additional $15,000 with 10 days to run in its campaign. That's August recapped, now it's time for September to shine. Let us introduce you to Alliance, the competitive card game where you are both the player and the card. Alliance is a collectible card game in which you are both the player and the game. You see, every card in Alliance will be based off of you and other gamers from around the world. The attributes for each card will be derived from your Steam achievements. So for example, the reflex attribute is in part determined by your performance in sports games. If you like, you can even preview what your card will look like on the Allianz website. To clarify, Steam isn't necessary to play the game, and although not confirmed yet, the developers have plans to use PSN, Xbox and various other player profiles. User-generated cards may be a little gimmicky, but they will provide many unique cards that can take Allianz's meta in new directions. On the flip side, it could make balancing the game a difficult task for the developers. In the end, what we really like about Allianz is that it's not just a digital translation of a card game. Like Hand of Fate and Duelist, it takes something from the digital realm and makes an enhanced experience. In this instance, it's drawing upon already established player profiles to create in-game content. With a bit under two weeks left, Allianz has 200,000 krona or 23,000 US dollars left to raise. Wakey, wakey, sunshine! Hey, kid, I said wakey, wakey! It ain't polite to sleep during a cutscene. Huh? A cutscene? Dusty? You're alive? Whoa! What is this place? I should have gone with that Italian guy with the mustache. Rad Rogers is a love letter to the 90s platformer. In it, you play as Rad, a 12 year old just sucked into the world of a video game along with his last gen console, Dusty, who has come to life as his trusty sidekick. Dusty will, in fact, be voiced by the legendary John St. John, the voice of Duke Nukem and more recently Jack Boyd in This Is the Police. Obviously, Rad Rogers is a throwback to the 90s platformer. However, in a similar fashion to Shovel Knight, Rad Rogers is not so much a straight recreation of a single game, but rather the amalgamation of many. Smoking a wooden pipe? Is she smoking a wooden pipe? Well, <coughs> it's my ex-husband for fuck's sake. Ugh, that's gross! The crude language that belies its childish look is very conquer. Its 3D side-scrolling reminds of Donkey Kong Country, and it has the pointless collectibles of Banjo-Kazooie. Rad Rogers is marketing itself as funny, and even likens itself to a Rick and Morty sense of humour. From the Kickstarter, the game's humour seems to be cornier and more forced. Nevertheless, it seems like a fun title that doesn't take itself too seriously, which is but another hallmark of the 90s platformer. If Rad Rogers secures funding, it'll begin beta testing immediately, with a scheduled final release for February next year.
The Rabbit and the Owl is the exciting debut work of six-man game studio Formal Sheep. The game's interpretive story follows two kindred spirits that have manifested in another world in the form of a white rabbit and a black owl. This new world is divided into light and dark, separating the two spirits. The white rabbit can only occupy places cast in darkness, and the black owl is likewise restricted to areas of light. This is not only a narrative device, but a gameplay one as well. Both characters must be used to navigate both the light and dark spaces and solve the game's puzzles. For instance, the rabbit may need to trigger a switch in the dark to open a path for the owl in the light. This is also indicative of the rabbit and the owl's choice to emphasize its puzzles over its platforming. It's a game that won't test your reflexes and control, but rather your mind and ability to figure out new environments and mechanics. The beautifully calm soundtrack and monochromatic landscape look like they'll help to reinforce this kind of slow and thoughtful experience. Already funded, The Rabbit and the Owl is looking to hit some of its stretch goals, which includes online co-op. It's expected to release next year. The Reckless is a bit of pixel art magic that asks but one question of you. Can you escape the tower? To give you a clue, Ruin of the Reckless is a roguelike, and if you know anything about roguelikes, you know they're tough as teeth. Ruin of the Reckless is no exception. Combining breakneck speeds with melee combat and a flurry of enemy waves, you can see just how merciless the game is just from watching. We're obviously quite partial to roguelikes here at Indieformer, but there's more reasons than that to consider Ruin of the Reckless. There's the happy 8-bit tunes that you can preview in the trailer, local co-op for you and a friend, and the depth of an ability tree. Perhaps most exciting are the collectible cards that let you change the rules of the game. You can make it easier, or alternatively make every hit from you or your enemies an instant kill. You can even stack different cards and their effects together. Ruin of the Reckless promises the challenge of a roguelike, an attractive presentation, and the ability to remix the game to your liking. Imagine a game without limits. A world where you can build anything from spaceships to orbital stations. At times, Kickstarter throws up some incredibly ambitious projects like Kingdom Come Deliverance and Crowfall that make your eyes pop in sheer wonderment. Dual Universe makes your eyes pop. The game is a sci-fi MMORPG, set in a world teeming with large planets to explore. But more than just being large, there are three things that make Jewel Universe's world special. Firstly, it is a continuous world with no zones or transitions that is shared by all users simultaneously. Secondly, it's voxel-based and entirely editable. Everything from spaceships to orbital stations can be created or modified by you. Lastly, much like EVE Online, it'll be a player-driven world. Establishing an economy, forming government, and setting taxes and territories will all be the responsibility of the player base. Honestly, this only touches on what the game offers. You can play as a solo adventurer or in a crew of 100, mass-produce the creations you engineer, go mining, be a combat specialist, and much more. Dual Universe offers an entirely editable and continuous world that is also large and beautiful. It's the kind of game that truly empowers the player, and if successful, it's expected to launch December 2018. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.